Behold my ultimate weapon. Ah! <laughs> this isn't a rocket launcher. You know, I really do need to invest in better weaponry. Hello everyone, JWR here. And I went through an old book I had. Um, yeah, old book. Cobalt. It's an older roleplay magazine that was out for a little while then. Yeah. The reason I was going over it was because there was something I wanted to discuss. The reason I picked up this particular Cobalt book as opposed to many others is because this one had a lot of things at the time that I was looking through. Um, adversary skills. You know, bellies for dealing with a specific foe. At a later time, I might go over them. But just an example Familiar Breeds Contempt, The Talent I Hate You, Not Going Out Like That, and the Improved Version. They all have dice rolls and they all have rules for it. Then, of course, they also had Arcane Diseases. You know, because fuck mages. <laughs> Stuff like seeping magic, spell warp, mages bane, things like that. They're all diseases. That's all there are. Then there's abilities and feats for chasing. Like giving chase to somebody. Most likely a foe. Whoops. Then they have a section about exotic foods, where it gives you an actual bonus. Uh, let's see if I can find a quick example for you guys. Okay, here you go. Cream spinach, level seven, seventeen, and twenty-seven. So it must be a pathfinder thing. Um. Healing Surge bonus is based off the item level. Until you next rest, you gain a plus two item bonus to athletic checks and melee damage rolls. At level 17, it's four, and at 27, it's six, as opposed to just two. Chicken noodle soup, until your next rest, you are immune to diseases of this item's level or lower. One, 11, or 22. And of course, they have gold prices on them 20, 350, 9,000. Purified Phoenix tiers are 125,000. What's that? What's our, what do Purified Phoenix tiers do? Well, let's look that up since we are already here. Let's see. We got Pickled Aboleth Brain, Mashed Banana, Why the Hell with Mashed Banana, whatever. Actually, no, somehow has a thing. <laughs> Purified Phoenix tier, here we go. Level 30, 125,000 gold pieces. Bit of money. This crystal clear liquid tastes like true love. A little chalky. Healing Surge bonus, I'm level plus four. So since I'm level is all 30, you put plus 4 on top of that. So 30 plus 4. Until your next rest, treat any death saving throw as though you rolled a 20. Ain't that nice. But the reason I was going through this book was because while I was right, yeah, I still have a little bit of a cold, I apologize. Um... <clears throat> While I was writing my books, I made notes on how certain characters went out and then ways they came back. And then when I got this book, I found that I wasn't the only one who looked at it that way. So I'm not completely not so crazy. Uh, 
And of course, there's the digitals. So in case you're wondering, it's uh, the chapter of is not supposed to end this way. That's the chapter name, anyway. If you're wondering why I suddenly smoothed out real quick when this was up, it's because the camera's trying to process all the data behind me. You'll tell the difference between this and when I'm actually in the other room. There's a small difference in quality. We're not going into that. We're going over this. It's not supposed to end this way. Six plot friendly alternative, uh, alternatives to acts off the character. Now, I noticed that because I'm sick, I look around a lot more on YouTube. But Spoonie had one about not getting on a boat. This holds for stuff like Star Wars as well. Um, if you're a physical type of person, you do not want to get on a boat. <laughs> you don't want to get on a boat. You don't want to go on a ship. You don't want to climb a rope. You don't want to go up a uh, mountain. You don't, want, you don't want to go in a cave by yourself. You don't want to separate from the party. There's a lot of rules. And Spoonie's already going over a lot of them, so I'm not going to go over them again. If you want to know specifics, you can go see his stuff, and I'll put a link down below for his Counting Monkey series. See, this is why I look at it. When I start something, I'd look, double check, and see if anyone else did it, and if they did, then I would just leap to them as well, because I said they did it before I did. But let's go ahead and go over, it's not supposed to end this way. Option number one, the mortal wound. Pretty much the wound doesn't, okay, the wound, the wound that would kill you, the DM can kind of push it back a little bit and make it something that, uh, it doesn't kill you, but you will remember that you lost. It could result in permanent physical disability. It could, uh, it could be an impairment in, in general. Um, a lot of characters have this as a Mary Sue kind of thing. In League of Legends, Katarina has a scar because she screwed up. She got into a fight and they nearly killed her and they cut her face. That would be the mortal wound. Of course, it's the sexy scar, which became a trope. Well, it didn't become a trope because of her. It became a trope because everyone had to have that one. Oh, I fought this. And it's a sexy scar. It, you know, sexy cry, sexy scar. Yeah. But in game you can make it for it's a speed a uh, speed reducing limp, inability to use certain items because you don't have both arms to swing it. Might be easier to get diseased, things of that nature. Um you can also do this as a reputation blow. For example, I am the great knight Agaham. My teammates and I have defeated many foes. And then y'all get your asses handed to you. Word spreads quickly. People don't want to be going with you because y'all got y'all tails whooped. Not just eh, but y'all got whooped, okay? Y'all didn't just lose, y'all lost horrifically. It, 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 reputation got shattered. People like that. No. It'll take a while to get that back, but that can be expected. Your, rep your reputation takes a hit. Followers might not want to run towards you. In fact, they run away from you. Benefactors and allies start dwindling. Things of that knowledge because they see you can fail. In fact, you're here before them now is just by chance. That's one thing. And the reason why I brought up the fact that I've written a bo written books is because traumatic memory, although it is a trope on its own, is when I end up using. The character may ask me, got killed by Saber. And then Saber got killed by Laser. And then, because the next one that comes up, not traumatic memory, but the one after that. They wound up back alive. May doesn't know why, but she always fears Saber. If Saber's in the area, 
and she sees him, she freaks out, she panics, she cannot focus on things. But that's traumatic memory. Though one has healed or heals, the experience at death's door can last an emotion it can cause a lasting emotional toll. Character develops intense fear of that which wounded or killed them. For example, a thief that nearly gets hit by part of a ceiling. Like someone tries to drop a ceiling on them, and a thief barely makes it out. They might be weary when they go into buildings that have the same type of ceiling, or a ceiling in general. Of course, there will be penalties and conditions that are appropriate. Like I said, when May is near Saber and she sees him at any point, she panics. Characters become listless or scared. The specter of their own mortality weakens their resolve. Martial heroes let their physical conditions soften. Magic users let their minds cloud with doubt. Those who follow gods and whatnot aka Divine Adventures, grow estranged from their deities. Pretty much you're not going to have a paladin kicking in a door with a bunch of zombies and stuff going, I am the Slayer of the Undead. No, because he has butt kicked so bad, he's like, uh, um, plans. Plans? No, we need to kill him. Yeah, I, yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're going to go kill him, but plan, plan, please plan. Someone have a plan. I, plan. I just run in there. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that, but I would like to know the plan. I, I plan, plan, please. Not a bit of a difference right there. It may take a while, but after certain conditions are met, they may be able to overcome it. May be able to overcome it. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, the next item, the thing I've told you about prior. Divine Bargain. A powerful being or beings of good and evil have vested interest in the fate of certain characters. So, if they turn up off the plane of existence, they want to fix that. The deity can do this in many ways, and I'll tell you how May and Saber end up getting back in a little bit, because I do have that. I do have that as a shorter story. Yes, yeah, so I'll put the link down there too. Um, let's see. The character's patron deity greets him in the afterlife, explaining that their work has not yet finished. Yada yada yada. The deity, key, the, nah, the deity can often opt on giving them a quest, and if they fail the quest or refuse to take it, they just die. Or, a counter entity approaches your character in the afterlife. Pretty much, um, I guess a good example would kind of be like Arthas. Although he didn't go to the afterlife for this. Um, in exchange for power. You'll see this in a lot of movies too. Well, a lot of the fantasy movies. In exchange for power or revival. Someone with a vet, someone of great power has a vested interest in them. And will offer them this power and ability and all that. If they do something in return. Because, you know, nothing's ever for free. In the Arthas case, it was, you you, you want to kill this demon that ravaged your land with zombies and such? Okay. Alright, tell you what. We got an idea on how to do this. You kill this guy, go over to this land, find this weapon, and when you draw this weapon, it will give you the power you need to kill this dude. Of course, he did all that, drew the weapon... Kill the guy, went nuts, and then started killing everybody. Then he started making the zombies. So, good going! But the divine bargaining 
um, Wow, I hate having a cold. Ugh. All right, the buying bargain. What happened in the story for May and Saber? Saber was told of a great sort of power that was in the town where May was at. Saber shows up with a, with a crew. Pretty much says, "Screw the treaty that you have with this city and the city elders. F it. I'm taking it. I want that fucking sword." So he goes in there, ransacks the place, just beats the shit out. Just Demons everywhere, things are dying. He gets a sword. Now, Laser's there trying to stop the attack. But Saber is just <laughs> a bit stronger. So the fight goes on and on and on and on. Laser does something, and it looks like it works. Drops the building on Saber. Looks good. Everything's done. May's happy. She's cheered. She's like, yeah, the attack finally stopped. Saber appears behind her, kills her with the legendary sword. And chucks her. So they say we get to fighting. Battle gets a little close here and there. End result, Laser ends up winning. He pretty much bolts Saber so much that Saber ceases to exist on a plane of mortality. While the two are dead, Saber's patron entity, Deimos, a ruler of hell, not the ruler of hell this time, just a ruler, came up and said, he's my knight. And of course, Death's sitting there going, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. This is the contract that you yourself have signed. You and the elders of that town signed this contract. He went against it. He's mine. We're done here. We're done. So then it was like, no, no, no. 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 No, no, It doesn't work that way. And they go arguing back and forth. Meanwhile, May and Saber just staring at each other like, you're an asshole. <laughs> you're an asshole, Saber. He's like, I want the fucking sword, so Saber doesn't give a shit. The argument goes back and forth. And Death goes, okay, you know what? You know what? I'll let, I'll, I'll let him come back to life. i even let him keep that sword. i even go there. Unfortunately for you, all his work is null and void. That means everybody he's killed in that town comes back. Everybody. And the sword will not be at full charge as it should be. It will be reset. You can either take this deal, or you can, or you can leave my fucking area, and I can take them anyway. Go ahead. Don't worry, I got all eternity. Oh wait. You go ahead. You make a decision. You make the decision. Oh wait. So of course Saber's like, no, sword stays at full power. Saber worked on the sword, got it to full power. He killed everyone there. That's goes that's all cute and everything. The sword could stay at full power, but you'll be dead. And the sword belong to your little brother. Because he will take it. Because, you know, all ogres think alike. A weapon of great power just sitting there doing nothing. While everyone's already dead, he's going to take it. So, of course, after some thinking and discussion, Saber goes, fine. Fine, they must, I, I accept, I accept the deal. Yes, every, all of them will come back. whoop de doo They will work the sword back up, just not there. So that's like, okay, well, I'll send an agent out to make sure this event kind of gets cleared from everyone's mind. If they've died in the town, if they died in the area during this assault, they will not recall this assault. That goes for you too, Saber. You'll have a sword, but you won't know why you have that sword. It'll probably be like a gift from Deimos to you or something. So everyone gets taken care of, all the minds get wet, except for Laser. Because he didn't die, even though he was dying, he didn't die. So he did not get that mental reset. So after everyone got back up, he threw a fit. 
as he's like, I know I saw you die, and you die, and you die, and I know you definitely die. You, you, you died a lot. And you died, and she died, and you died. Ooh, wow, you were you were in pieces. And, and the town is beat up, and the town is no longer beat up. And now you are alive. I'm confused. Greatly. But that was the whole situation. For Laser, it was great confusion because it was one person who was supposed to die, yet he managed to hold on to life just enough to start healing through it. Just enough. So he did not get he did not get that mental reset. So he knows of the attack. He knows the battle. He knows the fight. He knows of everything that happened. But everybody else believes he's crazy about that. They thought he maybe just had a dream or something. All because Death's agent couldn't mind wipe him because he was not dead. But that's divine bargaining. Saber's patron entity showed up and literally made a deal with Death to get his champion back. Of course, it had to be a deal. It wasn't just a straight, oh, you can get him back. No, it. everything he's done has to be negated. Of course, there's other strings that were important because May was also guarded by a patron, but that one wasn't seen. If you actually read the book, there's a reason why I had the weird kind of dynamic one. There's a reason. Another example, since we've gone over mortal wound, traumatic memory, and divine bargaining, another example is otherworldly possession. In short, the actual hero spirit is so it's it wants to stay on the plane, but the body is not exactly holding it. Because of this, you get stuff like what was that movie? Sinister, where the where the guy pretty much has ghost leave his or his spirit leave his body to find his kid or something like that. Which meant demons can come in at any point and just take the body. That's pretty much what otherworldly possession is saying. The spirit leaves the body and the body can be taken over pretty easily by anybody. Evil spirit enters the character's body before their comrades can, uh, comrades or another force can return the soul to the body. Of course, this makes the evil spirit somewhat in control of the body. Um, for those of you who've read comics, there's a Spider-Man series where Doc Ock, it was right before Superior Spider-Man came out, but Doc Ock pretty much hijacked Peter. Just hijacked him. Straight hijacked him. Doc Ock's essence went into Peter and forced Peter's essence into Doc. So when Doc Ock died, technically Peter died, and Doc Ock was in Peter's body, so Doc became Spider-Man. And he found out Superior Spider-Man how much Spider-Man was going back. During this time, flashes of Peter would appear before Doc, was like, hey, don't do this. You understand that you have a responsibility now. You have this kind of power. You have a responsibility. Eventually, the spirit would take full control of the body. Another example, okay, the Doc Ock and Spider-Man thing, it was a pretty interesting, it was a pretty interesting, interesting spin on Spider-Man, because Doc actually got to see things from a new perspective. Another way would be the Benign Spirit, which is Sayuri Yasumi, from which she got killed 
but her spirit went to me. Like, hey, I got stuff that still needs to be done. Either A, you can help me, or B, I'll just take over your body and I'll do it myself. And as long as Yuri was with May, May gained more power. She gained additional types of powers that actually fed off of her own. But that's another way to get around death. And it also leads to another another plot friendly thing. Trapped soul. In rare and terrible instances, something apprehends the spirit during the exorcist, uh, during its exit from the body while often an act of dark power. This could also result from strange persuasive magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much spiritual hijacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much all it is, a trap spirit. In this case, it actually points out, you can put it in other items as well. And the last option is the Final Destination route. For those of you who don't know what Final Destination is, well, I'll read, I'll read this and it pretty much sums up Final Destination for you. It turns out you were supposed to be ended this way, but through a strange twist of luck or fate or chance, the character somehow cheats death and forces death himself to find a way to fix that mistake. Because after all, no one escapes their destiny. Found destination in summary was someone saw a flash of the future, panicked, him or her, depends on what part of the series you see, him or the, her freak, which prevents them from immediately dying. Is it prevents the, uh, the person and their friends from dying immediately. And a few other people who were meant to die in the accident or crash or whatever. Usually it's a crash or a major accident. And the movie premise is, oh, they are going to die. How? Will be the question. And there are some... <laughs> Whew. Because remember, they're supposed to be dead. They are supposed to be dead already. They should... But someone screwed it up. So now fate or death themselves have to fix it. In Final Destination, it's usually death death who has to fix it because it was his design that got seen for whatever reason. It's his design that got seen. In the book, it's fate. Fate had everything set up and somehow the ball got dropped. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to enter, I'm supposed to enter a key when it switches over to about 10 seconds at a 10 second mark. So you wait like five, six seconds, seven, eight. At nine, the door rings. I'm like, huh? Wonder what that is. Ten, eleven, then come back and I oh, go, oh crap, and I hit enter. Yeah, I missed the ten second mark. Now something else is going to happen. That's pretty much all that happened for fate. Fate had everything set up. Was to push a button at this exact time, and they didn't. Or they did. But the person was no longer there. Like a the person tripped over their shoelace and the sniper bolt went past. What happens when fate is tempted, per se? Well, when it's fate that's trying to put you out, unfortunate accidents follow the character wherever they go and put the entire party at risk. Pillars will try to fall down as if they are shoved in the character's direction. Somehow arrows swerve around to hit exposed flesh. Friendly magic fails in such a way that causes the person to nearly die. 
and this continues on as a type of curse, possibly driving away allies, friends, etc. Until the character can divine and earn uh, can earn a divine pardoning, or destiny inevitably takes him out. That's one way. The second way is a little bit more direct. The first way is more like the Final Destination thing. Something happens and people die. The second way would be like that agent showing up going, you're supposed to be dead, so we're here to kill you. Nope, seriously, we're here to kill you. No, not personal. You should have been dead like a couple days ago and you're not, so fuck it. We'll do it. Agents appear at the most inopportune times. And of course, every time an age is defeated, they get stronger. Uh, I know there's a game something like that. I think it's like Shadow Hearts or something like that. It's an older Japanese anime style roleplay game where after a few battles you have to go into some sort of item or talisman which sent you to another world and you had to purify yourself before you let the evil build up. The longer the, build, the evil built up, the more likely it just to overtake you. Um, if I remember correctly, it could actually build up to hard level, high, heavy level bosses that can beat you down. And if you fail, well, you're done, son. <laughs> Your power overtook you. It was an interesting mechanic, but it was kind of like what they're saying there. The agents will always show up. It's always going to happen. Sucks to be you. Uh, again, you gotta keep killing them or try to get a divine pardoning for your sin house of five ability. So, there you go. Six ways you could technically not have your character killed. Um, any other things I can think of? Not really. Like I said, maybe at a later time I'll actually read over other things where I'm a little not as congested. So you guys have a good day. JWR's out. Uh, or outish.